State Farm Arena, finally. How long has this been in the making? The Dell i360. I have a very short bucket list. This has been on it ever since I heard about it. Wow, you can just stand right here? Oh, this is where I'm, this is where I'm at. All right, this place to come to get tight. Wow, look at this. You can sit up here and watch the game while somebody has a straight edge on your throat, okay? Some people would say this is my best look. I'm great at miniature golf. In the hole. <laughs> is that good? Yes, it's not good. Right? All right, so listen, we did the swag. I'm tight, yo. We did the swing hole in one. We got the site right here at the Delta Sky 360 Club. We want to say congratulations to State Farm Arena on its one-year anniversary. This was on my bucket list. I'm telling you, you need to put it on yours. South Bend, what a game. Notre Dame hosting USC. Listen, I know y'all got some Irish in you. You got any fight in you? Come on, fellas. Take yeah. it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. That's it from Notre Dame. Man, those Irish did have some fight in them. <laughs> Taking tips. You're gonna need a tip, brother. Because you don't want to do a tip in a second. Live from the Nissan Heisman House in Los Angeles, it's late night in the middle of the day with Neil Everett. Today's guest is Marcus Allen. And now here's your host, Neil Everett. Super Bowls, Heisman. Hall of Fame, your resume's unreal. What, what jumps off the page? Well, Neil, I'm glad you asked me that well, question. Well, I'm not that glad. Hey, join us again next time. We're in Pasadena, huh? Take it away, voiceover guy. 2004 LSU National Champion Marcus Spears. Little rapid fire, you ready? Let's do it. All right, the SEC. Best. Death Valley. Killer. Tigers. Bait. Tim Tebow. The GOAT. Billy Cannon. The real GOAT. <laughs> How about my jacket? <laughs> Swag. Uh, swag. Today's guest is Archie Griffin, and now here's your host, Neil Everett. Here with Archie Griffin, the only two-time Heisman Trophy winner. You're a Buckeye, I'm a duck. I, I guess that makes us enemies. That's right, Everett. That's right. We're out of time and we're out of shows. Take it away, Herschel. LSU legend, 1959 Heisman winner, Billy Kemp. The only man, he, this guy's so cool, he's the only one here not sweating. Well, <laughs> I'm the only one too old to sweat. How many times have you seen The Run? You know, I hadn't seen it today. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I either see a picture of it or, or see, the, see the old yellow film uh, three to four times a week without fan. Okay, we're going to play a little game now. We're going to play Name That Tiger. Name, okay, that, so name that Tiger. Name That name Tiger. That, I got so you, you're the guest, so you go first. Mike the Tiger, one. I'm gonna go Tiger Woods. Mike the Tiger, two. I'm gonna go Tony the Tiger, it's great. Mike the Tiger, three. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Lewis and Clark Tigers, that's where I went to high school. Mike the Tiger, four. Mike the Tiger's the winner. <laughs> hey, you're a winner. Join us in two weeks at TCU. With LaDainian Tomlinson, TCU's finest, what's it like when you come back on this campus. It's like I never left. Basketball power, Murray State. The racers. Ding, 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 ding. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. <laughs> Nissan Heisman House rolls on. Charlie Ward. And now, here's your host, Neil Everett. Heisman Trophy winner, NBA star. You were drafted by the major leagues. What else do you do, Charlie Ward? I still got it. That's all the time we have. Take it away, Neil. Hey, we'll see you at the college football playoff in New Orleans. Here with Herschel Walker, one of the greatest college running backs of all time, and still a, a physical specimen. You know, Herschel, I've been working out. Can, can you tell? Not, not so much, not so much. Uh. And 1983 Heisman Trophy winner, Mike Rozier. For the old Cornhuskers running back, coming back to Lincoln is always a great time. I was blessed. Uh, I have good parents, good people around me, and believe in God.
For Neil Everett, who's been an ESPN anchor since 2009, coming to Lincoln for a Huskers game day is truly a unique game day experience. It's a great atmosphere, and we've been all around the country, and this is one of the best atmospheres, and, it, and it's a great atmosphere after the win as well. We're here with Eric Crouch, Nebraska quarterback, one of the great option quarterbacks of all time in college football history. So we, we thought we'd play the option game, and I'm going to give you right, two choices. You're, you're, you're going to give Leonard Skinner or Molly Hatchet? Skinner. Nice. If, if you weren't a, a football player, would you have been a farmer? A farmer? Yeah. I kind of want to be one right now. That is amazing because you know what we're going to do? We're going to shuck some corn! Where you at? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> it's in his DNA, man. He's from Omaha and went to school at Nebraska. Eric Crouch, Heisman Trophy winner. We just shuck some corn. 20th anniversary of the pick, changed Oregon football. Kenny Wheaton with the interception. Take us through it. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, that's all the time we have. Hey, join us next time. We're in Lincoln, Nebraska. Hit it, Cam. Who's better than one? We have two former greats, uh, uh, Heisman Trophy winners, Mike Rogier, Eric Crouch. At your fastest moment, your best moment, your fastest, were you ever faster than him? I don't know. <laughs> no, Eric, Eric nope. was fast. Eric was fast. Wait. Eric, Eric can tell you, if somebody's chasing you, you're going to run a little extra fast, all right? <laughs> but Eric was very fast. Uh, he was very fast. I mean, my days now, Eric's a quarterback. I'm a running back. I got beat up more than Eric. I think Eric will beat me. Uh, Everett, what is all this stuff? Hey, man, I'm studying my playbook. This is detailed, Jake. You got any advice? You know, the biggest thing I learned in school was throw it to the guys wearing maroon and gold. No interceptions. Yeah. Got it. Wrong team! Or was it?
I mean, listen. I uh, I'm getting choked up now. I uh, I interviewed Derek Fisher, who most most people say that was Kobe Bryant's best friend, and they say Kobe Bryant Kobe Bryant was not a guy that was real chummy. And yeah. but Derek Fisher and Kobe Bryant came into the league the same year as rookies. And uh, in fact, uh, Derek Fisher told the story about his mom wondered. Why is this kid, this 17-year-old, getting all the publicity, and you're not getting any? Yeah. And she she called up the producers, of the Jay Leno, show, to say, "Hey, how come my son's not getting on the Jay Leno show? He got drafted by, by the oh, Lakers man. too." That and they went through, you know, they spent 13 years together because Fisher went to a couple other teams, but they won five titles together. And I interviewed him um, on. God, what was it? It was Monday, and I got done with the interview, and I walked back to my uh, my little office, and God, I just started crying, and it just, it just, it, and you hear stories. I heard Gary Vitti on the radio, who was Kobe's trainer. He's the only guy who saw Kobe play every game Kobe played, and he talked about how he'd just gotten a, a text, a video text from Kobe, where he'd sent him a picture of his daughter. And he said, "Who's that look like me?" And it, and it was like it looked like him, only it was her. 
and he Kobe had just trademarked the word Mambasita oh, for wow. his little yeah. for his daughter. And these stories, and I think, and you know, I don't have kids, but you don't have to to just feel this tremendous loss of somebody that you don't even know. You know, and I, I said to Derek, I said, you know, you you're best friends with Kobe. I met Kobe two or three times. Could not have been nicer to me. Uh, and and then but there's people that are out there that never met him. Yeah. And I said, why is it that we're all so busted up? And Derek Fisher said, I think it's because we realize that Kobe Bryant's a guy who 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 laid it out so like left nothing out there. And we ask ourselves, are we doing the same thing? And it and it and it and it tugs at. Hey, I want to leave with this. I want to send my heartfelt condolences to John Nolan's family. John was a guy I worked with for you know a long time ago back there. The guy had the gr- biggest heart. He was a hell of a nice guy. He certainly deserved better than he got. And I want his family and friends to know that he's in my thoughts. Uh, and I just really have great sadness for what happened to, to one of our own back there. This one hurts. It made the state of Hawaii cry. Cole Brennan was one of ours, and now he's dead. 37, addiction. Brennan is the greatest quarterback in University of Hawaii history. Now it's saddest story. Smile. Light up any room. He was a rock star. An arm that could light up any scoreboard. He led the nation in offense and swagger his junior season. Could have gone pro. Probably should have. Thought he owed it to Hawaii to return for his senior year. Quarterback the team to the Sugar Bowl. Hawaii in the Sugar Bowl. Finished third in the Heisman among quarterbacks. Only behind Tim Tebow. Cole Brennan didn't owe us anything. We owe him a big mahalo. I believe it. Free shoe deal. Yeah, would be would be free sandals from Olu Khan. Well, what is that? Olu Khan. Make her this slip up right here. Uh, you know, your, your bare feet are on this show way too much for me. But, you know, ESPN, you know, I had a guy contact me. He said, hey, you know, I want to represent you. And I said, dude, I'm fine. I'm in Hawaii. So don't bother me. And uh, and and then, you know, before the call ended, I, I decided, you know what? I'm going to tell this guy, hey, give me an interview at ESPN. Because one, he'll, he won't. And then I, he, won't, he won't bother me anymore. But two, if he does, well, then, you know, maybe there's something here. And so that's really, you know, you guys are all, all young people. That's really... Uh, you know, you you have to determine where your golden ring is, okay? And at that moment, I decided that I was going to reach for ESPN. I damn near separated my shoulder because I never thought I never thought of reaching that high. I just didn't have that. I didn't have that kind of ambition. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't dream about a future of working in Sports Center. I worked in local television, but I never equated what I did on you know Saturday at six and ten for three minutes in Hawaii. I never equated that to doing that on a big stage like Sports Center. So it was, was, so Cindy, it was completely unplanned, uh, but I threw it out there. And, you know, again, like I said, I'm very blessed, you know, that that it just, it ended up rolling my way. And now I've been here 20 years, so. So I love that. How many Grateful Dead shows have you been to? None. How closely do you follow UCLA football these days? Uh, my weekend's a little better when they do well. You know? You know who they're playing this weekend? I don't. Who? They're playing Oregon. Ah. Uh, what do you, you want to do, do on this? Should we do something? Sure. That? What? Uh, dinner? Dinner. Okay. All right, perfect. You give me points? No, I think I'm getting <laughs> points. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll do this. All right, we'll do this. Just straight across. Okay. There it is. That's, That's on. Right. Mark Harmon. You bring your wife, right? Absolutely. Okay. Back at you. Dude, NCIS. Watch it. (laughs) Hey, Giannis. Opa! Opa! You guys know that nobody actually does that in Greece. Giannis, oppa.
Now this is a close we can really celebrate. We always want to celebrate closes because it means the end of the show. But how about this? Linda Cohn getting ready to celebrate 30 years with ESPN. Did her first Sports Center on July 11, 1992. Who's responsible? and you have laughs and you can still do a great job informing and entertaining and leaving with a smile. Well, this is going to make you smile right here. You got a big fan coming up right Congratulations, here. Congratulations, Ms. Linda, on the big 3 0. You got to give me an increase. I got to tell you about the time I drunk out of college. Congratulations, Ms. Linda. You're third. You're the best. Oh, my God. That was How awesome. About little Wayne giving, giving he, you a shout out. I, I'm telling you, Lil Wayne, I love you, man. And you're great because he once put me in a song uh, Earthquake. And what, you know the lyric? Yeah, I know I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want me to rap. Linda Cohn, Sports Center legend. Thanks, Neil. Stuart Scott, who uh, has one of the best catchphrases of all time of, Booyah! Booyah! Stuart Scott and I did the first show yes. from Los Angeles together. Stan, Stan and Stu did the second night. Stuart and I did the first night. So I, I, I hold that memory very close to uh, me. Super cool. Well, in tribute to one of the greats. No. Bartender, give me a Foster's off Matt Foster. <laughs> Twins. Five. Who's your uh, who, who's your favorite NBA player of all time? Irvin Magic Johnson. I didn't know you guys were watching last night. Thank you guys. It means a lot. Thank you. What are you talking about stuff? I had that 27 10 last night and today, chicken curry. 54 points last week and the next day, curry stew. Yep, yeah, stuff. I don't think Thank you guys so much. Thank you. It means a lot. I lace them up every night for guys like you. Who was that guy? I don't know. Seems like the chicken, though.
and here he is, the great Vin Scully. Uh, Vin, thanks for joining us. And, and I understand there's a little bit of uh, house cleaning going on in, in terms of your memorabilia. What, what's going on? Well, Neil, uh, we're auctioning bits and pieces of my life. I guess you could put it that way. Rich Davis and Kavita, we got a guest of all guests today. We do. Sports Center Zone. Neil Everett's in the house. Neil uh, Everett. You know how close this is to my heart. Absolutely. The Polynesian Football Hall of Fame naming these four to its 2020 class. To, to bring you LeVar Ball with Stephen A. Listen. God dang it. Oh. Oh, my sweet dad! My sweet dad! Son of a... My mic was open. I know better than that. I've been doing this long enough, and I apologize to all those who had to hear. You're going to leave your body. I've done enough of this here. That's all we got. Turn the mics off, please. Freak this Saturday. <coughs> you alright? Whoa, it's in my throat. Oh, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Good thing I'm not the horse favored to win the race. Here's Janine Edwards. Dr. Doolittle. I mean, Joe Madden at it again. Tuesday brings the cockatoo into the clubhouse, and he follows that up with the Penguins on Wednesday. The Rays manager tweeting that his motivation was to get his guys to chill. 
He motivated me to motivate our team. This is Kenton in research. I've got a paper and a pencil with an eraser. I need you to verify like a champion. This is Annette in makeup. I need Stan to look tight tonight. This is Snag and Graphics, and this is Thor's hammer. I need you to be worthy and possess the power. This is Tommy, the director, and this is Pat Sajak, the bobblehead. I know that you know that I know that you know. That Neil, he sure knows how to motivate. Uh, tennis are the rankings. I like to know exactly where you stand at all times. Yeah, it works for us. Yeah. Hey, if they rank Sports Center anchors, where do you think I'd be ranked? I don't know. Come on. Nah, I don't know. Get into it. Right, come on, pick a number between one and ten. I'm not sure you'll be in the top ten. I'm in the top ten, Roger. Uh, can you give me your all-time starting five? Oh, of all time? All time. Um, Magic at the point. MJ at the two. Um, Larry Bird at the three. Bill Russell at the four. Uh, this, <laughs> this is tough. at the five. And I'm struggling because, you know, Kareem and Will, I mean, it's, they're neck and neck, so. Are you, are you six man? No, dude, I'm not. I'm nowhere near that stuff, man. You, got, you still got Jerry West, you still got Oscar Robinson, you still got Walt Frazier, you still got Bob Petty, you still got, I mean, it's, the list goes on. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm always a fan of the underdog, and these are underdog dogs. How's it? I'm Neil Everett for PETA. My name is Neil Everett. I work for ESPN. I host Sports Center in Los Angeles. We talk about sports. Hey, what advice would I give those of you who want to do this? Well, one is don't wear blinders. Okay, there are a lot of great jobs in media. Being on air is just one of them. Keep an open mind. That will give you lead to more open doors. Okay, uh, and don't have any typos on your resume. Okay, that's a killer. Before you speak, listen. Uh, and before you write, think. How did I land the job at ESPN? Divine intervention. 
Not really, but it feels that way. Really, it begins with networking. I had a friend in Hawaii. I worked in Hawaii. He moved to the East Coast. He met an agent. He said, you should check out this guy in Hawaii. The agent checked me out. He called me up. He said, hey, I want to represent you. I said, no, I'm fine. Then I thought, you know what? This is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to reach for something that I'd never thought about reaching for before, and that was ESPN. I did local television, ESPN, big deal. So anyhow, I said, give me an interview at ESPN, we'll talk. The guy called me back, said, you got an interview at ESPN. I said, I guess you're my agent. Three years later, I got the job. I've been here 20 years since. All right, this year right here. Boom, this is our workspace. See, Stan and I, we have little cubes. That's where we work from. That's where we gather inspiration. And when, we're, and when, when we really need inspiration, when we really need to get our head together, where we go is right there and right here because that's where it all is. It's all inside you. You just got to bring it out. Texted me. Oh boy! Because I got this text. Yeah. So I, you know, you were walking home and you were, you, you know, you heard him playing Soldier Boy. Yeah. So then I came in. I came in and I said, George Fong, our security. And look at they caught you on. No, here. they didn't. No, look at there you are. Where? Right there. That. that. <laughs> <laughs> look at. <it>. Oh. <laughs> That's some people thought he wouldn't laugh. I knew he'd laugh. <laughs> Neil Everett. My, yes, my head really is this big. Uh, Zag Nation has contacted me. They're not happy, Jimmy. Uh, Zag Nation is, is Gonzaga. And your lack of knowledge and understanding and appreciation of all things Gonzaga, frankly, is shocking. First of all, Bing Crosby went to Gonzaga, Jimmy, and you know, there's a statue of him. He's got a pipe in the statue. And the folks up in Spokane, that's where Gonzaga is located, uh, they're wondering what you've been smoking to not know more about Gonzaga. So here's what they proposed. They said, why don't you ask Jimmy if you can get his friend Jennifer Aniston's plane. We'll fly up to Spokane. Again, that's where Gonzaga is located, Jimmy. And we'll, we'll, we'll have a whammy. We'll go to Jack and Dan's for a beverage. We'll put you up at the Davenport. Heck, you'll be so impressed with Spokane, you'll probably want to relocate up there and be a season ticket holder for Gonzaga basketball. Except there's no season tickets left. Every game is sold out. They're that popular. It's that cool. And let me tell you, a member of your family who knows all about Gonzaga, and that's Cousin Sal, because Cousin Sal picks winners, and Gonzaga's a winner. So winner, winner, crow dinner for you, Jimmy. Uh, in all truthfulness, thank, we're just thankful you didn't call it Gonzaga, because then we'd really have a problem. It's game day. Go Zag. Welcome to Sports Center, Spokane style. I'm Neil Everett. Tonight, fans in the Spokane Arena are in for one of the greatest rivalries in all of hockey. The Tri-City Americans versus your hometown Spokane Chiefs. next I still got to reach my cardio zone really good on the slopes thanks man I just imagine I'm this car really yeah I'm like an Audi a6 with quattro all-wheel drive you know how it handles the snow and ice mm. I just think about not breaking my legs barreling down that mountain hoping I don't break my legs 
You might want to try the whole quattro thing. Or avalanches. Being buried, frozen. Hey, look at the stupid ice cream. You want me to pull over and give you a hug? I found it. The convention started an hour ago. Let's go. Right on. I'll see you later, man. This is my name. I'll talk to you, Jack. Love you, Jack. <laughs>
<laughs> Step back. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Whoa. Whoa. Talk baseball. Whoa. I want to see it, man. I'm the Cowboys. I'm the Cowboys. Put it on. Show it on. Watch out, be careful on us. Whoa. Chip. They got you something to go with it. Grace of all time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys so much. You guys are welcome Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you guys, man. I love you guys so much. You guys have no idea. Yeah, we love you more. Hey, man, of that. Bobby Jack. Yay! Living legend. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with Bill Walton, and then I, and and we're talking. This is before we're on camera or after. And I said, you know, my brother lives in San Diego, and he goes, well, next time you come to San Diego, you must call me and come to dinner. And I'm like, no way. So I'm like, all right, that's an invite. Yeah. So it's like a year later. And I see Bill and I go, hey, Bill, I'm going to be in San Diego in you know two weeks or whatever. He goes, well, then you must come to dinner. And I go, OK, uh, who can I bring? And he goes, you bring whoever you want. And I go, OK, I'm going to bring my I'm going to bring my two brothers and, and my stepdad, a basketball coach. And Bill says, remind me of that several more times before you come. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we went to we went to Bill Walton's house and we had he and his wife, Lori, were the greatest host and hostess. Uh, we were there all night. By the end of the night, I'm naked in a hot tub with Bill Walton drinking Bud Lights. <laughs> and and to this day, he remains a friend. I And and his wife and my wife are friends. And it, and and my stepdad didn't wasn't alive much long after that. And so it was a, it, it was just it was a beautiful moment. I got a big I got a big picture of it at our house in Oregon and uh, it's my it, it, it's that's my fondest memory because of the, the lasting friendship that I've had with Bill Wall. Wow, that's incredible. Your brother John, what would you say? You missed the Cubs! 
This has been a great, great honor, and I thank you, Vince Scully. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it, Neil. And uh, hopefully I'll see you along the way. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Joe Namath, still making plays. Gotta call your wife before you go on the air, man, I'm telling you. My nephew Spencer. There you go, coach. Oh! There you go! <laughs> Neil, how's it, Rob? Mahalo, my friend. Aloha. Love being over your shoulder, Neil. Neil, how are you, champ? Until we meet again. Hey, man, I'm so proud to be your partner, brother. Hey, man. Likewise. Uh, I got chicken skin, man. Well, this is this is the end of the line for, uh, for me. And I've never heard of Neil Everett. And I've never heard of Neil Everett. <laughs>